The structure to be constructed should primarily serve the basic purpose for which it's to be used and must have a pleasing look. Once the form of the structure is selected, the structural design process starts. Here are the breakdown of structural design procedure. First one is design code, standards and design criteria. Before everything, a structural engineer must know what codes and standards he must use since they are the guidelines for designing any project out there. They provide optimum solutions for many types of structures. The codes to use in the design depend on the location and type of the project. Supplementary codes, local codes and references are also considered when required. Did you know that most comprehensive and researched codes are Euro codes and American codes? Design codes in most other countries are also derived or based on those standards. Each code is divided into sections according to their applications. For example, when using American codes, we can refer to ASCE 7 for design loading and considerations, UBC 97 for seismic loadings, ACI 318 for building core requirements for structural concrete design, and AISC for steel structures. All American and European codes with respective applications are shown in this table. Note that geotechnical design methods and procedure differs from place to place and doesn't have a specific code because soil is very complex and has lots of variables. Second one is load considerations and calculation. Since the designing process is very iterative, it's essential for a designer first to identify the load and load combinations. This will help the designer assume, intuitively or from experience, the best frame for structure. The load considerations depend on the type of the structure, its occupancy and its location. Basic loadings are dead load that usually is composed of the self-weight of the structure, superimposed dead load that comprise of the weight of non-structural and semi-permanent members such as floor finishes, partitions or machines, and live loads that constitutes the movable loads. Depending on the location, wind load, seismic load, snow load are considered accordingly. These load considerations are detailed in the design code and standards, for example, ASCE 7 for American codes. Third step is conceptual design. After getting an architectural plan of the buildings, the structural planning of the building frame is done. In this stage, initial design of the building elements such as slabs, beams, columns is performed based on code recommendations and load considerations. It starts with selecting the location and orientation of columns in such a way that they do not interfere with the architectural drawings. And it also involves positioning of beams, spanning of slabs, layouts of stairs, and so on. Proper coordination in other departments like the architectural and MEP should also be observed. Prior to structural modeling, a draft of framing system is highlighted at first in the architectural drawing to make sure that no architectural aspects are being compromised. The next step is structural modeling and analysis. Once the proposed frame has been finalized, Structural engineer will verify the adequacy of it through structural modeling. Using available structural software such as SAP 2000, structural modeling can be easily done. All the manual analysis is possible. It's recommended to model and analyze the proposed project using structural software. And the manual calculations are only used for individual checks. Fifth step is iterative design. Now that the initial dimensions, loads and stress and deflections resulting from them are obtained, optimizing the structural design through iterative process is essential. The design process is facilitated by using spreadsheet or other design software. Next, new dimensions are entered to the model in step 4 and the analysis must be rerun. New internal force and strains are obtained and designing process is repeated again. This iteration is repeated until every member in the structure satisfies the design check stated in the relevant code. Some examples for design checks are rebar percentage, beam and column capacity ratio, storage drift, 
punching shear, joint shear, and so on. After all this, the next step is foundation design. After the final dimensions of members are found, the foundation system type can be selected taking into consideration the bearing capacity of the soil and the loading coming from the structure. The last step is drafting. In this step, the structural plans are created. These plans should be fully detailed such that the construction process in the site can proceed smoothly and won't be delayed due to missing data in the drawings. Mostly used software is AutoCAD, however, there are other ones too. Basically, client gives you the needs and priorities, then architecture draws the project using software such as AutoCAD, and then you model a preliminary design of building using SAP 2000 or similar software and utilizing the design standards and load combinations. Analyze the model, obtain necessary stresses and strains to design the reinforcement and to check the dimensions. For designing the members, Excel spreadsheet or other software is used. If all design and performance checks according to standards are satisfied, then the design is complete. If not, you have to enter the new dimensions and repeat the process. When the design is complete, engineer must show all those structural members on the project drawing with all details such as reinforcement. Drafting is done using AutoCAD.